Hello, in this video we're looking at an end game build in Stranger of Paradise using the knight with the great sword. And uh, by end game I, I do mean like floor 200 plus, um, even though some of the components of this build can become available as early as floor 13 or so. Um, so uh, looking at this, this is. Um, we have a, a concept here of using knight. We have a lot of stamina on this job. And unfortunately, the job action scales with spirit and it's magic. So uh, also intellect uh, or we could do damage with intellect. And, and unfortunately, we don't have very much intellect. And uh, we could potentially have used this with a lot of agility and critical hitting, except that we also don't have agility so we are very much out of luck with the job action however because of all the stamina we can take advantage of the stat bonus stamina combo abilities like spinning slash that becomes available after floor 16 oh, I'm sorry after floor 15 or things like retribution which is bugged but uh, still does some damage um, whether you counter or not uh, or a uh, batter or power impact, a uh, batter where you just kind of swing things like a club and just try to hit them. So, uh, oh, and also 10,000 Gs, which is a very hard hitting stat bonus stamina combo ability, more so if you get the guard off and hit the enemy with it. But for our purposes today, we're using spinning slash stat bonus stamina. Uh, and this, this is the... Uh, same spinning slash that Swordsman gets, but not the uh, uh, Evocation or Ultima versions of Swordsman. So we don't get to guard during this spinning slash. We, we lean into our other ways to survive in order to, um, to keep spinning. So let's look at our job affinities, and I'll, I'll cover the, the, the core ones, and then we'll look at some of the ones that are optional. Um, so Knight, 400% gives you immunity to damage or, uh, from enemies as long as your light bringer, dimension bringer, or chaos bringer are active. And I'm getting the Knight 400% from my master points in category one. And, uh, you can get this as early as Bahamut difficulty because of job level 200 is available at that point to be able to invest your master points into this. So we're going to be in a state of Lightbringer pretty often. Uh, now the rest of this knight investment is to get the stats that Endgame wants you to have in order to try to either survive or just slay stuff. So uh, any and all the knight 800% uh, gets unlocked later and that's, that's where, uh, by the time you complete the third DLC story, you unlock Knight 800% along with all the other things. And then the job level itself, like the 300, that's, that's because you either went to floor 101 and higher, or you borrowed someone's rift and were able to open the chests at floor 101 or higher, uh, but meant to tackle on the optional content. Anywho, uh, so extra Knight is for the stamina because the more night 800% you get the more stamina you bring out of your job and a job like night gets a lot of stamina actually they get the most stamina in the game um, this next part is a cross between preference but also uh, very useful so for now we're going to say it is vital for the build even if it's technically not, because I'm going to be using and benefiting, uh, benefiting from it very often as a convenience. Uh, but there, there are two different ways to, well, three ways to actually get uh, what we're about to do going. So Samurai 600% becomes available after you clear floor 12 in your personal rift. And every time you do a combo ability effect, you also trigger parry buffs such as parry hp recovery which knight gets just 
part of their night job tree or peri MP recovery that we can put on our category three master points and start just recovering MP. So even if we don't actually parry defensively, we are still getting these buffs for at least five seconds, which still can be a lot. And then uh, we have Samurai 400% that every time you parry, the next combo ability or ability critical hits. So we get to take advantage of, in this case, we don't have agility to really uh, take advantage of this, but we do have some critical MP recovery on the category four master points. And those let us keep spinning as long as we find a new enemy to start hitting. And uh, that's, that's how we maintain the spin in a drawn out battle. So we, we have that going on, but let's talk about the combo ability effects. What are those? Well, on your job tree, you have things like um, a true knight, uh, it, and it's sort of a circular shape. And on the right side where it says a true knight ability type combo ability effect, and it's put on your first link. So whatever combo ability or ability that you set to your great sword's first slot, as long as the normal attack hits the enemy and you press the job action button uh, or combo ability button, you're going to, in this case, stagger all the nearby enemies, if they are staggerable. And then, thanks to Samurai 600%, trigger all that effects, uh, all the parry effects, as well as the one that's the critical. Now, Spirit of the Sword, same kind of deal, except you have to use a one-handed sword. Or Commandment, uh, a different type of combo ability effect, but you have to parry. Not a soul shield, but an actual parry. Also, not an enhanced guard, but an actual parry. Uh, so that's guarding just in time. Now, I, I would have liked to have used the Knight of Destiny because they have one extra combo ability effect uh, on their enhanced guard. And this is, this is great for greatsword users that are playing a bit more traditionally, using the enhanced guard to try to protect themselves. Uh, just while we're talking about it, let's, let's actually change things up so that some of the things that I say in the video get a little bit of a demonstration instead of it just being Ben talking in the world map. So, Enhanced Guard, you have a charged attack, but let's say during that charged attack, you press the guard button, or in my case it's L1, for five seconds, that is going to parry everything that's coming in. So just as an example, I'm going to just burn through my MP. And then I'm going to... Well, I tried to. Am I invincible? Okay, yeah. So at that point... And then they could still keep hitting me. Well, now that's not a um, enhanced guard. Let me do it early. Ah, darn. He's taking too long. <laughs> Anywho, that would have been an enhanced guard. And that would have been the, um, the enhanced guard combo ability if I had actually done that. Uh, which I think, yeah, I actually have spinning slash on that. So... I know, like, why is he just putting Spinning Slash on everything? So wonderful. Anywho, let's do 10,000 Gs, even though we're not going to be using it. Eh, let's do, you know what? Let's make them regret it with the, uh, the batter. So just for giggles, this is what batter would have looked like. Whoops, minus the part where I... Uh, got hit. Anywho, ba backing up, let's let's look at this again. So, uh, combo ability effect. Uh, on the first slot, as long as you hit the enemy... Whoops, oh shoot.
you start getting any parry buffs that you had, plus any critical hit stuff going on. So it's the idea that as long as the enemy's alive, you're going to benefit from... I'm sorry, as long as the enemy has HP, and maybe even if they don't, uh, Summon I 600% is going to help you out a lot. And then during battle, Summon I 400% can help you out with those... Um, what's the word called? Critical MP recovery, which we'll get to in the master point part of the video. You can skip ahead to the timestamps, or you can pull a jack and just skip the whole video. I'm actually at this point, if you haven't uh, skipped the video yet, then you haven't pulled a jack yet. Um, uh, but let's see. We are looking at other things. So to reduce the amount of RNG involved in getting a spinning slash going i do have swordsman 400 percent i realize i skipped over void knight we'll get back to that uh swordsman 400 percent so that you enable combo abilities or job actions uh well i say job actions that you enable spinning slash uh, for some reason this gets a little wonky and doesn't always show up immediately after floor 15 after you clear it uh, like you might unlock Rising Eden and 10,000 Gs, but Spinning Slash isn't there yet. So this is sort of a weird phenomena, and you might have to progress past floor 21 just to get it to show up sometimes. Or you might have to just find a greatsword between there and then, and that just has Spinning Slash on it, and then you have Spinning Slash. Um, but for the most part, Swordsman 400% is supposed to give you Spinning Slash, and then on top of that, it gives you the damage dealt with Greatsword combo abilities. It's about 40%. It doesn't show directly on your UI. It just calls itself Greatsword Mastery. Uh, no, Greatsword Master. It's at the very top there of my special effects. But that is a 40%-ish damage dealt bonus that happens to be also any damage dealt like that also doubles as break damage. So 40% break damage. Uh, which is the route that we're going because of we're not using strength or intellect so we're leaning into the stat bonus which uh, does give us a lot more break damage instead not always but in our case it, it barely puts us into break damage territory uh let's see and then uh bonus if you happen to have swordsman 600 percent but the core thing here was swordsman 400 percent to avoid the rng part of things and then uh so so just to kind of uh, recap the core part of stuff is knight 400 percent for the protection samurai 600 percent optional but very very good for what we're about to do and this is the route we're going to do so uh, i call it optional and we'll explain why sooner, uh, sorry, later. Uh, but for now, we'll say part of part of the build, and then Swordsman 400% also core to avoid RNG. Uh, but if you happen to find Spinning Slash on your weapon, then you can get away without it. But it's also a 40% uh, boost. So now, uh, now these next components are optional, but strongly recommended or just my personal preference uh dark knight 400 percent gives you uh near death at all times and along the way you get those little uh damage dealt near death bonuses that th they also translate to break damage um even though they they do favor the hp damage route more but uh we have that near death and then we have Berserker to 50%, where by default, uh, if I did not have perfect job affinities across my gear, I would have Berserker on my greatsword, because the greatsword tends to get more job affinity than the other slots. And that would be giving you a form of Protect and Shell, which is in a separate mitigation bucket, uh, so or damage mitigation. So you take less damage multiplicatively separate from all of your damage taken across your gear so the and, and and in turn that helps your light bringer last longer because you don't lose as much when you do get hit 
And then it also helps our Sentinel, which we'll cover later, last longer as well. And then even if we get dispelled or broken, we still have Protect and Shell. So we still have mitigation going on. And then if you ever do lose your Lightbringer, uh, just a little perk here. Berserker, 120% and 50% refill the break gauge when you hit the enemy. And uh, the hope is that we'll keep hitting the enemy. And unless we're critical hit or hit with an unblockable attack, um, we're probably going to keep... Uh, well, or if we die and, and get grabbed, uh, we'll keep spitting. Okay, that's a lot of different ifs. Now, for my own sanity, I do have Summoner 250% here to reduce the cost of the spin. If you're not spinning and you're on the night, then you... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, if you're not spinning and you're on the night, you don't need the Summoner 250%. And if your MP is like just... It's just coming in too fast, you also don't need Summoner 250%. But I'm going to have Summoner 250% because I wrote a Reddit post that said Summoner 250%. So this reduces the cost of your spin. I'm sorry, not the activation cost, the sustained cost of your spin. And, uh, well, ultimately, you have a little bit of breathing room in case the next wave of enemies do, uh, doesn't spawn quickly enough. If you need to fit this in on your uh, gear... Uh, then you might place it on your greatsword also. Now, as a bonus, I have Monk 250%, but you do not need this. You either choose Monk 250% or Summoner 250%. You don't have to have both, but if you have both, great, because Monk 250% doubles the duration of your parry buffs, because for some reason, parry buffs ignore your buff duration. So... 500% buff duration, parry buffs only last for 5 seconds. Thanks to Monk 250%, they're gonna, the, the parry buff is going to last 10 seconds. So that's 10 seconds of a lot of MP recovery, which is very nice. And then the last thing I have here on my Master Points, I'm sorry, Job Affinities, is the Void Knight 600% for the Haste. Uh, the haste when you have more max MP, uh, you have 400 max MP or, or more. So I, I like having this just so that I'm spinning faster and uh, defeating the enemy a little bit quicker, like 18% quicker just because the spin is uh, that much faster. And then uh, I also have the Hermes Sandal. This is also optional. So is the Ifrit's Primary Blessing up there. That's also optional. I, I like it when I hit it. But I don't always hit it. But the Hermes Sandal, Sovereign of the Skies, that is the Dragoon 400% effect. Specifically the 400%. Not, not, all the, not, not, not all the effects before it. Just the Sovereign of the Skies effect. Uh, increases your attack speed during any of the bringers by about 15%. It does stack with haste. Um, I couldn't tell you how, how it interacts with haste. Only that it does indeed stack so that you're spinning faster. And then how we spin even faster is with Lunatic, because Lunatic normally, I'm sorry, so our command abilities, Lunatic normally is, uh, you get the attack speed, but then your break gauge doesn't recover, and that's fine, because Lightbringer is our break gauge. Uh, and once that runs out, if it runs out during a spin, we, oops, sorry, we still have uh, Berserker 50% and 120% that will cover us until we get critical hit, unblockable attack, grabbed, or probably hit with a really strong magic spell. Um, be careful about magic on once your Lightbringer is gone, be careful about magic. And then we have Sentinel here because this has no duration. Sentinel uh, lasts until we're dispelled, until we're broken, or until they beat the crap out of us. And in this case, the bottom left corner, my sentinel practically doesn't go away unless I start letting them take care of my back. Let me just drain myself out. 
And now Sentinel's gone, and now they can hurt me. Although, I'm not making a very good point, because the knight has too much stamina. So, ah, crap. And I have too much luck on Gambler, so they're not actually, uh, <laughs> they're not hitting me. <laughs> Bad point. Um, that wasn't very much luck. Anywho. What was I saying? Sentinel is there to protect us during enemy attacks deplete buffs because we might be spinning and the enemy eats away our Lightbringer, but we still want to keep spinning. And so this will let us keep spinning, surviving those hits, uh, not getting flinched, and even surviving magic attacks unless the enemy somehow manages to get behind us and hit us from behind and break us, at which point we do a panic Lightbringer and try to uh, get, uh, just try to survive. And then the Seal of Blood here, the Seal of Blood is here not for the damage or the break damage boost that it offers, because it absolutely does offer that. It's here for the convenience, so that when we're fighting waves of enemies, before we spin, we do a Seal of Blood, and then we start spinning and just take out like the, the next waves of enemies, whether that's three enemies or ten. Uh, because we're breaking them first, we don't have to keep spinning on them. They're going to get broken, they're going to soul burst, and then we keep going. So it's, it's not real, it's not, we could use it for boss battles, uh, and you might see, still see me use it for boss battles. But to reiterate, it really is here for convenience for the enemy waves. And you can swap this out with other stuff. Uh, provoke, for example, lets you... Uh, the damage taken here is in a separate bucket than all the other damage taken that I've mentioned so far. Uh, protect and Shell. Uh, now, the thing that we do want to avoid is Summon Tachi. Uh, earlier we thought, hey, Knight 400%, you don't take any HP damage. D summon Tachi is fine, because... Even though you take more damage, no, it's multiplicative. And that causes your Nightbringer or your Lightbringer when you do get hit, that causes that thing to start going away even faster. Uh, so if you have improved effect Summon Tachi, you're going to kill yourself so much faster than just regular Summon Tachi. And Summon Tachi also, um, if your offense is strong enough, you won't really notice that it's hurting you. And if you really want the damage boost then you go with bravery because as of the last patch they give you the same damage boost uh, and bravery works on all your allies and it doesn't uh, and it also refills some break gauge while it's at it it does cost 200 MP instead of 100 uh, but it's it's just it's a for the most part it's a superior version of summon Tachi um, I mean other than the MP cost and then we have Lightbringer, uh, but also consider using Dimension Bringer from time to time if you see enemy attacks deplete buffs, um, just because it's like, I don't want to chase down Death Machine. That, he sucks, or it sucks, whatever. Okay, I, I this is going on pretty long, uh, but wanted to make sure that all the explanations are there <sighs> and <laughs> still have room for my ranting. So, gear. Looking at our gear. Is the goblin still looking at us? Oh my gosh. This, this friggin' goblin. Where's the goblin slayer? Uh, so, let's look at our gear. We have, across every single piece of gear, if we could, stamina, during Lightbringer break damage dealt, the Alexander at the bottom there, because Alexander is a summons blessing, even if you don't have it equipped. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Back up, back up. Even if Alexander is not your primary blessing, so at the bottom right corner, there's no primary blessing, Alexander itself gives you stats. So uh, in this case, Alexander brings out the most stamina and then secondary, it brings out strength and spirit from that job. And in Knight's case, Knight gets a crap load of stamina. And so Alexander, bringing the, the summons blessing that brings out the most stamina, really 
makes night go really ridiculously high. And, and our strength and spirit are actually coming from Alexander at this point. But that, that's, that's secondary. We, we don't, on this build, we don't care about that. I, I mean, even though the spirit is nice. Anywho, I'm sorry. So damage dealt, spinning slash, stamina, during light, bring or break damage dealt, and Alexander across every single piece of gear. And if I had damage dealt, great sword combo ability, that would have been on my great sword. But I don't because I purge too many things and uh, I don't have one. So uh, they, they do stack for spinning slash. And uh, the, the damage dealt also adds to your break damage dealt uh, by 1%. So uh, like it's, it's a one to one. So that's a f uh, the damage dealt spinning slash is also 51.4% break damage dealt while I'm doing spinning slash. Now, on some pieces of gear, I, I realize on the Reddit I posted something like, oh, use a ribbon or use Paladin 400%. And only because I, I had the luxury of high-ranking status ailment resistances, in two status ailment resistances, I can get, uh, I, I, I can get a total of 100% while I'm on an Evocation or Ultima class because those classes give 18% by themselves uh, once you fill out the, the tree with rat tails. So now I'm immune to silence, paralysis, petrification, slow, things that would just get in the way of spin life. Uh, and then I'm also immune to poison, which would get in the way of damage taken at max HP. Speaking of which, uh, Knight does have some damage taken at max HP, and uh, that still helps your Sentinel. That still helps your Knight 400% Lightbringer. And so I didn't have to invest too much because Knight does get about, like, I think 24, 25% damage taken at max HP on their own. So I have one Legs that has that effect. And then I also have some Master Points to reach minus 100%. And based on the damage formula, that is actually half damage reduction while you're at full HP. It's not, uh, it's not 100% damage reduction as of uh, the first DLC patch and onward. Uh, and then any other damage taken you have beyond that gets a even more severe penalty for how much it mitigates. Like not just the regular penalty of like, oh, if I had minus 400% or 300% that I'd reduce my damage taken by 75 or 80%. No, th that is no longer the case. Uh, it got nerfed again as of the second DLC patch because people were stacking it way too high and they were just trivializing the mitigation even with really crappy stamina and spirit. So now it's nerfed for all of us. <laughs> um, anywho, looking at the rest of the gear... Uh, I have some critical break damage dealt because I'm pretty much going to be critical hitting uh, during my spins. Just as a rough example. And then it's saying crit, 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 crit. So we are taking advantage of some part agility and all the critical hits. I'm sorry, and the critical break damage dealt. Uh, let's see, let's see. And then, what do we have left? Um, let's look at the accessory. On the accessory, I happen to have an Ifrit badge that I slotted over. And that Ifrit badge, uh, it's very faint. But if I hit the enemy, there's going to be this red flash. And then there's going to be this little glow as well. Let me uh, put this on a slot that's easier to see. So I'm going to put Spinning Slash on a slot that doesn't do a combo ability effect. And see that brief flash that's like just to the left of Jack's chest? It's really brief. Like it's on his chest, then it's on his hip. And if you time your Slash 
uh, now there's an icon in the bottom left corner, the, the fourth one. Well, now it's not the fourth one. But that was letting me know that I was benefiting from Ifrit, which is a large boost to your damage dealt or your break damage dealt that uh, with a little bit of practice that you get those red flashes uh, but you, you can't get the red flash hitting nothing you do have to hit the enemy to get that red flash and then it makes the rest of the spin all the more deadly okay sorry long video but really wanted to cover everything in, in more detail than I usually do because I keep uh, glossing over things <laughs> even though those videos are already 30 to 50 minutes long so uh, yeah it doesn't help that I pause like this second job let's look at the second job uh, we're, we're choosing monk on this route for for uh, two reasons one Monk has break damage enhancing uh, buffs. So this, this focus or supercharge boosts not only your damage dealt, even though it doesn't say that in the, in the description there, uh, it also, it, because of the damage dealt boost, it also increases your break damage dealt. And that affects physical and magical. So this is, this is the break damage routes, uh, the way you squeeze a lot out of your break damage, or if you were using a magic damage build, Monk is how you'd squeeze more damage out of that as well. And uh, about at, at the, f even if you get one stack of focus, that's about a 60% damage boost. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, it's it's additive to, uh, to all your gear here. So um, it's like having during Lightbringer, or it's like having break damage dealt plus 60% at one stack. And then at all four stacks, that's like having damage dealt at like 120%. Oh, I'm sorry. Break, well, yeah, damage dealt and break damage dealt, 120%. Pardon me. But the way we push that further is through improved effect focus. And by stacking all of these improved effect focuses or foci or is it foci? The false C. Is this Final Fantasy? Yes, why did I ask that? Final Fantasy 13. Okay, um, we have improved effect focus across the board. And now, whoops. And now that extra 120% is multiplied and becomes even deadlier. So I'm not entirely sure how the math actually works, but I think that's something close to like 360%. Uh, so 360% damage dealt, break damage dealt at four stacks. And uh, that that is a lot because even on our gear, we have between Spinning Slash and Greatsword, we have like 400%. And then with our critical break damage dealt, as well as our during Lightbringer break damage dealt, we have like another 350%. So that's like, I can't math, 750% plus the extra 360% from focus, we're, we're going to then uh, take that and put it all on, t just multiply all that stamina, whatever that contributes to all this, and we're going to have a fun time. No, we're not. Um, so that's, that's the improved effect focus. But I noticed that we have, of course I noticed because I friggin' made the build, improved effect focus sentinel uh, fancy uh, that you ask that and there's hp across every single piece of gear and there's titan because titan is the the summons blessing that brings out the most hp across every piece of gear and so sentinel i'm sorry almost every piece of gear so sentinel uh gives you at least half of your max hp as a barrier and while that barrier is active uh it, it doesn't deplete through time through time uh or enemy attack deplete buffs and it does get to take advantage of all your damage taken that you have stacked up so that protect the shell the damage taken at max hp that goes to make making your sentinel last even longer and then it, it um 
and then we have also have Lightbringer and Knight 400% to kind of make us tanky. So the Sentinels, how we're going to survive our magic hits and all this other good stuff. But, but yeah, so normally you get half of your HP. And thanks to all of these uh, HP things and monk stuff that we're going to go into in a bit, we have 21,000 or 20, almost 22,000 HP outside of the rift. Sorry. Let's, and then, thanks to all the improved effect sentinels, uh, that sentinel that we end up casting is going to be so strong that we have an artificial layer of HP, like the 22,000 plus, and then some. And just as an example, this goblin cannot actually do damage to us. Okay, never mind. He did one damage. Ow, oh, crap. He did one damage twice. So, this is an example of... Uh, we're going to go over to Marilith and just get our butt kicked for a moment. Um, this is an example of what happens if you have a lot of stats. Uh, I'm going to turn on the enemy's stats just to see what happens. So in the Rift, you're also going to have extra uh, uh, monsters that give you even more stamina. But just as an example, this is this is uh, I know this is like a lot different than how I normally do things. I'm going to use Sentinel, and I'm going to stand in front of Marilith and hope that she doesn't actually hit me from behind. And then you just kind of see how sturdy this becomes at end game. And so this is without Knight 400% active yet. But I'm going to let her hit me from behind. And now, this is the damage I'm starting to take. And I'm too stubborn to die, so... Oh, hold on. Let me finish this fight. I'm so sorry. What kind of build video is this? Okay. Okay, Marilith. You know what? Let's just do a seal of blood. And, uh... And, uh... Let's, uh, actually go over the second... The gear effects. After this. I really... This, this detour is really here to demonstrate how sturdy Sentinel was and how much it was protecting us through all of the crap. But also highlighting its vulnerability that if you get smacked in the butt, that you get broke. So protect your butt, protect your back, and you will be... Uh, what's the word there? Oh, shoot. Please. No. I'm in the middle of a video. Please hold on. Uh, man, I should have thought that out sooner. Anywho. Sentinel. Good. Improved effect Sentinel. Great. All this HP. How did we get it? We got it through master points here. Also, you, there's some other questions. That we'll, you know what? Let's just look at the job affinities. <coughs> Let's talk about the Sentinel part first. Mantra, Monk, 400%. You get 50% of your max HP. And then a little HP stuff along the way, but um, you get 50% of your max HP. And then as a bug that got reported twice and not fixed in a year and a half, so I call it a feature, uh, Muscle Belt stacks, uh, gives you Mantra as well. And that stacks with Mantra on Monk. Oops. Which we're using through uh, Master Points. And so now we have, uh, instead of like 50% times 50%, it's, it's plus 100% max HP. So we're getting double max HP. And then on our Master Points and across our gear, we have HP invested, as well as Titan for more HP. 
Uh, so even if you don't have a master belt, I'm sorry, a muscle belt, your sentinel could potentially still last a good long time. Now, other things that we were using that we took advantage of completely is Cyclic Warrior 600%. Every time you use a Lightbringer, you trigger a Soul Shield, and Soul Shields recover some MP and max MP uh, in this scenario. And uh, you can reduce the cost of your Lightbringer, or Dimension Bringer, as well as your other command abilities by what will feel like 25%, thanks to Void Knight 400%. And then your soul shields, uh, so, so now we're only losing, instead of 200 MP, we're only losing two, uh, 150 MP every time we use a Lightbringer. And thanks to Void Knight 120% and 50%, uh, you're getting increased MP limit boost rate. So your soul shields recover even more max MP than before. Whoops, help if I like, but, and then through also a we'll call it undocumented feature that was escalated twice and hasn't been fixed so it's a feature evoker 120 percent um i i realize it says conjurer up here and i'm i'm referring to things as their base jobs even though it might say genji or conjurer or trickster um so evoker uh, thanks to Evoker 120% and 50%, every time you do a Soul Shield, you recover MP for your allies. But as an interaction through Cyclic Warrior 600%, the game seems to think, hey, uh, an ally did a Soul Shield for Jack, and they have Evoker 120%. Give Jack some MP. But even crazier is uh, it also gives Jack max MP back too. So that's not... Uh, that that is not documented in the patch notes or here and that wasn't supposed to be and uh, I know people might would have hated me if the bug report actually got fixed but uh yeah it didn't so that's where my confession's coming in I did submit it twice <coughs> pardon me and then uh another component we have is Leviathan primary blessing now if you don't have a Leviathan badge, one piece of gear should have Leviathan on it. Uh, I'm not going to switch it here because I'm going to get confused. Uh, let's see if anyone else has it. Nope. Nope. Darn. Well, that's okay. Well, Leviathan, what that does is uh, your soul shields recover even more MP and max MP. And then, just to like drive all of that power in we have summoner 600 percent that increases the potency of your primary summons blessing in this case the leviathan's soul shield mp recovery and max mp gain gets doubled just just the leviathan portion of it but all of that together with category four master points so uh see towards the bottom there like like uh Pardon me. The fifth item from the bottom where it says increase MP limit boost rate 60%. That's causing your soul shields to get even more max MP every time you soul shield. Uh, th there's a separate issue about soul shielding with low spirit, but that only applies when you're facing an enemy, not cyclic warrior 600%. Um, but in, in essence, this combination of cyclic warrior 600%, Void Knight 400% with the 120% and 50%, Evoker 120% 50%, and the Summoner 600% with Leviathan Primary Blessing, which we're getting from the accessory right now, and your Category 4 Increased MP Limit Boost Rate, that's going to help us sustain Lightbringer or Dimension Bringer. Uh, and if your job level is not like 285, you will lose some max MP there, but it's also something that is not so bad because you still could chain cancel your way back up to full in the middle of combat. When I say chain cancel in the middle of combat, I really mean something like, um, well, <laughs> uh, I don't actually have it set up right now. 
where I still could kind of do that. <laughs> what is that then? Uh, that is using focus and chain canceling with some MP cost reduction on the focus. <coughs> uh, at least I think there's MP cost reduction. Yeah, I'm getting some MP cost reduction thanks to Samurai 120%. It's not very much. And then I'm also getting some MP back if I chain cancel, which is changing my job in the middle of an animation like a combo ability or a job action uh, that's not like a channeled, I'm sorry, yeah, it's it's not like a zero MP cost type of move. It's it's something that does cost MP. Uh, that's not always the case, but we'll say generally that's the case. Um, that you might do that in the middle of combat, just kind of chain cancel at least one time, and then you might be back at full MP or ma or max MP before uh, job level 285. Wow, this video, how long? 40 minutes. Ben, Ben, keep it together. Nobody's going to watch this. And if you are watching it, I salute you. I salute you. I snapped, pointed at you. I'm pointing at you and thanking you. I am thanking you. Even if you're watching this at two times speed, or even if you have this muted and you're watching this, I still thank you. Happy birthday to you. That's also a happy birthday coupon in case it's not your birthday yet. Uh, you can cash it in on your next birthday, and then it's me wishing you a happy birthday. Even if your birthday's not feeling very happy, you, you get to cash that in. Don't ask me how you actually cash it in. It just works. Todd Howard, it just works. How many times are you going to reference that guy? Anywho, uh, we have here the other job affinities. Summoner, 50% and 120%. Every time you chain cancel, you get some max MP. And then we have Gambler, 50% and 120%. Every time you chain cancel, you get a random amount of regular MP based on your luck. I don't have very much luck, so this is not very reliable at this point. But it helps in a co-op rift, or if it's a very slow rift, and I just don't want to use up an ether or a high ether, or if I'm in the world map and I just don't feel like touching the cubes, or if I'm in the world map as a guest and the host doesn't touch the cubes, and I'm like, please, touch the cubes. I just used all of my MP up to chain cancel. Please touch the cubes. This is, this is my workaround for the times where uh, the cubes are not touched or uh, the mega elixir is not drank. Drunk? Drunk. Uh, so we have that. And then for my own sanity and convenience, I do have Paladin 400% to avoid silence, paralysis, and petrification. Because if I'm silenced, I can't use any command ability. I can't focus. I can't use Lightbringer. Nothing. And then if I'm paralyzed or petrified, I also can't do those things. Yeah, I could use Chakra to get out of that. Because I do have a free command ability slot. But we're not going to do that. And then we have Red Mage... 250% as a convenience so that we're squatting less due to the decreases the amount of time required to charge attacks. That also applies to charging supercharge. So we're not charging anywhere as long because of Red Mage 250% helping us out there. And then something that I have that you might see me rarely do because I'm just getting lazier is Samurai to 50%. Also, we get the benefit of like having slightly reduced focus costs thanks to the 50% and 120%. But the 250%, when you chain cancel, you get a damage boost for 5 seconds, and uh, that damage boost is also a break damage boost. Um, so it, it's, it's not very much, but it helps. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. It doesn't last very long, but it still helps. Okay, Ben, let's go back to the gear effects. My gosh. Timestamps, yes. <clears throat> so we have improved effect focus, sentinel. We have lightbringer duration across every single piece of gear, or at least we try to. And we have HP across every single piece of gear, or at least we try to. 
And we have luck because we didn't have very much buff duration on our staves at the time. So we just have luck to help out with Gambler 120%. But we could have had buff duration across our gear. And that will help our focus and other buffs last longer. Another thing that I forgot to mention, and I'll mention this after this, is we have... Um, two badges here, the Bahamut badge as well as the Leviathan badge. And the Bahamut, I feel like if I want to make this video shorter, I need to just skip over it, but it's too late. Let's just start talking about it because it's here. So Bahamut gives you, every time you do a soul shield, you get a stack. So um, just as an example, every time I do a Lightbringer, I do a soul shield. That stack, that is Bahamut, primary blessing in effect. That is plus one to all stats. And now that's plus three to all stats. And that 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 persists. Uh, that's taking advantage of any... Uh, that soul shield stacks persists. Just the stacks persists even when I switch jobs. But... If I don't have Bahamut on my other job, I don't get the Bahamut primary blessing stats. So what does these? What do these soul shield stacks do? The, these that three in the uh, that bottom left corner. Well, if your other job has things that are similar to Bahamut, where every soul shield gives you stats, then you get those, those soul shield stacks become active to activate those stats. So night 600%, every soul shield you do, you get plus 1.5 stamina up to 20 times. So while I'm on monk, I get, well, I, I get plus, uh, I get the plus one to all stats thanks to Bahamut. And then because of summoner 600%, while I, at least I'm on monk, Bahamut's stats get doubled. So that's plus two stats to all stats per social stack but then if i swap over to knight i don't have bahamut really should put him on the gear i just don't have it i'm sorry let me rephrase that uh, i don't have it i clearly have it i just don't have it on this piece of gear anywho uh while i'm on knight i'm only getting the advantage of the the 600 percent knight for every soul shield I do, I get some stats, 1.5 stamina. Where Jed, as an example, um, if I had, <coughs> pardon me, if I had Assassin on my gear instead, uh, I would have been getting the agility from Assassin 600%, or on Black Mage, the... Uh, that 600% getting intellect. And I don't have anything else that I can think of right now that's set up to whatever. So, just a rough idea of how Bahamut, the social stacks work, uh, and how that transfers over, even though all these things are, are uh, separate videos that are just slammed together so that you really don't have to watch the other videos. Like, hey, if you want to know more about... Nope, this is, this is the video that assumes that you haven't watched the other videos and that we're just talking about all of it all at the same time. Oh shoot, did I accidentally stop the recording? Oh, thank goodness I did not. That would have sucked. Let me just splice it together, Ben. Um, where am I? Where am I? Uh, okay, now let's look at the master points. Oh my gosh. You know, I do have some unposted videos that just haven't, they just go on so long like this that I'm like, this is too long, I should do it again. No, I think I just need to post them as is. Um, anywho, master points. We have knight, stacking stamina all the way. That's physical defense that helps uh, less damage you take, less break damage you lose. Uh, and then it helps with our damage and our break damage of stat bonus stamina combo abilities. So we're using it. Knight, job affinity. Uh, because we beat the third DLC story, we have access to Knight 800%. And all of that extra 
job affinity gets converted into stamina along with some other stats. So we're using that. Let's go back to, let's do category three first. Uh, because I'm using Summarize 600% on this job, I'm, I have parry MP recovery. So that's 84% parry MP recovery for five seconds. And thanks to Monk, 250%. Now it's 10 seconds. That lets me spin. And then I have category four, critical MP recovery, because my spin is going to critical. And this critical is not critical health, like, oh, you're at, you're near death. No, this is critical, like you hit them from behind or you triggered a critical hit. And so you get MP per hit, per critical hit, um, depending on how powerful that hit is, the underlying potency of that attack. I call it potency, I think, because of Final Fantasy XIV, like 1.0, but um, maybe 2.0. I, I can't remember. Anywho, and then the rest is uh, I did want my damage taken at max HP. So I had 50% um, on gear, 25-ish percent on my job tree and like 24% here. And now I have minus 100%. So I take half damage before protect and shell. And then that, that kind of reduces it even further, separate bucket. And then we have critical break damage dealt because it was the next highest break damage dealt that I can take advantage of. And it lasted longer than the parry damage dealt, which is only, uh, it's 9%, but it only lasts like... <coughs> Pardon me, five to ten seconds. Next, we have our monk. Whoops. Let's go with how do we sustain the Lightbringer spam. So that was increase MP limit boost rate. That's how the soul shield recovers even more max MP. And then uh, what we don't have this round is we don't have any soul shield MP recovery. So when we're at six bars and we use a Lightbringer, right now, we actually won't have all six bars of MP. That's fine. But we do have Lightbringer duration, so that our Lightbringer lasts instead of 20 seconds. It might almost last 40 seconds, thanks to this. And then plus all the crap that we have on our gear, it might even last 60 seconds. 60 seconds of invulnerability if we don't get hit. <laughs> and if you get hit, that might last like only a few seconds. Anywho, for some odd reason, we have parry MP recovery, and I'll explain that. This is why I say summarize 600% on the knight is optional, and I'll, uh, while we're using knight, and I'll explain that later. And then, to help out with the sentinel, we have HP stacked up, and we have monk to get a total of 400%, because we get 80% across our uh, job tree and, and the 30% that we start with and then you get another 330% from your master points so that you get mantra which increases your max HP by 50% so this HP plus 2000 would have normally went up to it, it, it'll become 3000 can't sing that song noise oh, okay stop it Ben focus dang it um, uh, nope stop it Okay, so <laughs> do you have a problem, Ben? Uh, anywho, thanks to Mantra on the Muscle Belt and Mantra from the Monk, 400% HP plus 2,000 is really HP plus 4,000. So that's great. And then we have buff duration so that we don't have to squat as often. Um, that is the hope anyway. So why do I say... Samurai 600% was optional. Specific to this build, we have Miracle of Light. Kira. Uh, so, on the Black Knight version of Knight, it says uh, the class change effect Ultima. Increases MP consumption and reduces the ability's duration. That sucks. But the effect of a successful parry can be triggered even with a soul shield. And, uh, and so, thanks to Cyclic Warrior, 600%, your soul shields would then trigger the Black Knight's, uh, at least the recovery effect, uh, the soul shield effect of it, not the actual damage, because I'd love to just Lightbringer someone to death. Um, it sounds violent. I think someone did that already. 
so I'm going to use Miracle of Light. And now, well, unfortunately, I don't have enough MP to uh, do this. But if I do a Lightbringer... I am now getting just a bunch of MP recovery just kind of going in here. And that's the side effect of, well, that could be helping me while I'm spinning. And so I don't necessarily need critical MP recovery or parry MP recovery as long as I'm willing to stomach my parries uh, as long as I'm willing to switch over to Monk every like 15 seconds and do that and that kind of thing. But for convenience, we do it this way instead. So that's how we do it. And that's because Knight right now has even more parry MP recovery than the Monk does. But um, yeah, just throwing that out there. You have options. So what else do we got? Uh, this is the part that... <laughs> Crap, 55 minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Next, we have our allies. Let's start with Neon. Neon is not optimized here because we still have Lionheart on the accessory, which is no good, because she has Knight 400% on her gear. But anywho, why am I bringing the allies up? It's because... Liberator 600% exists. You get 12% of your allies' stats while they're still alive. And uh, it doesn't show up on the UI, but Neon almost has a 1,000 stamina. So that's an extra 120 stamina for Jack. And what's his face that's not even showing up right now? Ash doesn't get as much stamina, but we also didn't stack Knight the same way this build was something else for both strength and stamina so that's that's why it's like this but uh neon gets the most stamina out of all of your allies as a knight paladin would have been pretty good too because they only get just a little bit less stamina than the knight uh, and so I stacked a bunch of Knight on every single piece of gear, and Liberator still gets a good amount of stamina. They get about, like, we'll call it five stamina on their rankings, and about, like, four spirit or something like that. Except when they're with Knight, they don't get as much spirit. But whatever. In short, we're bringing out as much stamina as we can out of our jobs. Across the gear, ideally, they would have all uh, Alexander, and they'd have stamina. And then, in my case, I want them to share their spirit as well. Now, the Lightbringer duration is there because of Knight 400%, where uh, for your allies, your NPCs, when you press the direction pad left or right, or on your keyboard, you press the letters R or T, they become invincible and uh, take no damage. And this could be anywhere from 20 seconds to 60 seconds or more if your Lightbringer duration is stacked up pretty high. And so... I have immortal stacks. Uh, I have temporarily, temporary immortal stat sticks that survive, give me their stats long enough for me to finish the boss. And then I could r r raise them or revive them with a potion afterwards. So that's, that's just uh, something we can do there. And Alexander, again, bringing out the most stamina out of your jobs and Knight getting the most stamina out of every job in the game and Alexander giving the most stamina out of all of the summons blessings. Uh, now, I do have one piece of Phoenix gear because I... Uh, uh, neon gloves at the time did not actually have Alexander gloves. So she has a, a piece of Phoenix gear. And I just didn't feel like optimizing the, uh, the Lionheart. That probably should just be a Hermes sandal instead for more attack speed. And then we have Ash either as a Liberator or a Berserker, either of the two are fine because they both get the same amount of stamina for this build, but Liberator gets a little bit more spirit. And so I want to pass off some of that spirit, 12% of it. So what we do, I get like 50 spirit, 48 spirit out of that. And um, 
Berserker and Cyclic Warrior, I just did not bother to optimize this gear for this specific build. Otherwise, it would have been knight across every single piece of gear. And then I probably would have had Berserker or, or actually specific to this build, I would have had Liberator on every single piece of gear too. So Knight and Liberator on every single piece of gear just to keep things simple and get all that extra stats. But enough talk. Have at you. No, let's let's go and find uh let's go and find what's the word? Let's go get beat up. Let's go against our favorite boss, Tiamat. Enemy stats up there. Let's do the deplete buffs because that sucks. And then max HP reduction and even the max HP and the break gauge. Just things that suck. But not suck so bad that we uh, can't clear the fight. So let's talk about the routine because I didn't actually talk about the routine when we were fighting Marilith. At least I don't think I did. Um, first, we, we summon our allies. We summon our trusty stat sticks. So if you play the Rift, absolutely summon them. If your monsters are not maxed out and you want them to get maxed out in your own Rift, bring out your allies because their bodies do count towards the quest credit. Uh, so instead of playing the game like for 20 extra jobs, they could be helping you out with Liberator and Knight and Assassin and Sage, whatever job that they're on. Even if they're eating the floor, they will still give you credit towards those quests. Not, not stats, but they'll give you credit towards those quests, even if they're dead. And, and the drawback of that is uh, you only have to hear them talk and talk about how you've used the potions or how they've run out of potions unless you turn their voices off in the system settings under audio and just turn everyone's voices and the music down even though that music is sometimes funky um and then <coughs> pardon me uh oh and then also the other drawback is that they do increase the enemy's uh hp and break gauge by 10 percent each but they give you so much stamina in the end that it is absolutely going to put you at the advantage um, just based on how the formula works which I don't 100% know how the formula uh, like the specific numbers of it only that having them out sharing 120 stamina with you is going to put you past what enemies expect you to have and you're going to be even tankier than before okay what's the routine how do we get started well first if we're in the world map we do a focus and chain cancel. And if you run out of MP, then you end up touching the cubes and end up um, just kind of, <coughs> pardon me, uh, to recover your MP. But that's the world map. Ben, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. Okay, let's let's start that over. So, you use Lunatic, you use Sentinel, maybe use a Lightbringer, and thanks to all that MP stuff, you get max. Uh, you, you barely used any max MP, and then you start using Focus or Supercharge. Try to get that to four. If you're in the world map, I'm using Chain Cancel just to get extra MP out of this. So I have Sentinel, Lunatic, Lightbringer, and I can refresh my buff duration by spamming Lightbringer. Unless there are trials afoot, like max MP boost and recovery, that trial is dangerous for Lightbringer spam, and so is command ability MP cost. That also is dangerous for Lightbringer spam. Now, next, I am going to switch over to my knight. Even though I could use Seal of Blood, doesn't matter which job at this point. I'm going to press D-pad left and right. I'm going to attack once and start spinning. Oh, 
I have enemy attack deplete buffs. <laughs> so I needed to show that this would still work with those trials on. So that sucked. <coughs> Sorry. Now we could also use Dimension Bringer. And this is just purely an example. I'm going to switch this back after the fight. And try to get a head start on spinning on them. And the hope is that they die before the bubble comes out. Or before they have freedom to really hurt you. That's not always going to be the case. So... And then even if Dimension Bringer falls off, you still have Sentinel to protect you a good chunk of the damage, as long as you don't get hit. If you're fighting against uh, Gilgaman, um, I call him Gilgaman, uh-oh, inventory, shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, if you're fighting against Gilgamesh, uh, if he breaks you, or if he thinks he can kill you, he is going to Final Fantasy you to death. And uh, at that point, the one way, one of the ways you have to survive that is to light bringer or dimension bringer just as he's doing it, so that you get the invincibility frames, and uh, he doesn't split you in half. Now, in this game, there's no uh, gore for the allies, but your 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 torso absolutely would be sliding off after he d does Final Fantasy on you. That that is that is what that would look like. Um, the Rift. All right, we're at the Rift, and we're only... Oh, one hour and five minutes, my gosh. Uh, so, the Rift here, we have monsters like Bomb. <coughs> Pardon me. That's giving us stamina. That's great. Also, damage dealt to bosses, which is more break damage dealt. Great. We have the Skeleton. More stamina. And if you happen to have Swordsman and Warrior built up, that would have been more um, stamina as well. And now, thanks to the extra Swordsman, uh, I'm getting some MP cost reduction too. We have Curl out because of the Spirit and also the increased Monster Quest efficiency uh, to get credit for defeating the enemies faster. Bonus if you have White Mage up there because that's more Spirit as well as a chance to revive, but... Uh, it's not going to be very common, because only Jack can be a white mage. And then we have the Tonberry. Uh, why do we have the Tonberry? I think the Tonberry is a leftover. I didn't actually want him here. Sorry. Uh, we have the Behemoth for two reasons. One, combo ability stat bonus. That is very important for us, because we're using stat bonus stamina. Um, and that's both damage and break damage. And then we have the damage dealt to bosses. Uh, that's also going to be break damage. That reduced stat bonuses, ignore that. Uh, haven't gotten to the bottom of that after spending many hours across many scenarios with many trials and just copying and saving and trying to find out the difference and I just did not find any. So I'm chalking it up to another video to talk about that so I don't have to re-record this one. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So, the, the last monster. Um, we'll say at this point it's your choice, except that it's not because I'm going to go with Malboro to get the extra spirit. All right. So, if I do get hit with a magic attack, it's not so painful. Um, all right. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to do two rifts, because this video is so friggin' long. We're going to do an enemy wave, and we're going to do a boss rush. Uh, before you go into a rift, make sure that you are... Um, right now, I'm holding the left trigger, or L2, I'm sorry, uh, and pressing the direction pad left or right, and I'm not sure how to do this on the keyboard. I want to say, like, 5 and 6 on your number row at the top. Maybe not, by default. Uh, you go to the shop, make sure your Phoenix Downs are at 3, get a Mega Aether. If you're playing co-op and you're the host and someone joins you, use a Mega Elixir on them so that they can start their very first rift with you at full max uh, 
MP. It, it's it's just so helpful. And then those who are joining people as a guest, uh, because you're probably not going to presume co-op data, at least not always. Uh, if if you know the ramifications of it, you you might not do that. Uh, separate video. Uh, do a mega elixir on your way out so that your host just doesn't have to drink a mega ether or something. So it's just little little happy etiquette type things. Also, be the person that buys the Phoenix Downs because your gill is temporary and the host has to live in that world that you left them in. So what do we do? We're drinking a mega ether. And then we're on our monk. We're going to go in. We're going to do a lunatic, a sentinel. We're going to do lightbringer afterwards. And then we're going to start trying to focus. I won't have time to focus all the way up. So I might have to leave that at... Um, I might have to stop focusing like at 2, maybe 3 if I'm fast enough. Somewhere in all of that, I'm going to press D-pad left and right. And if I'm feeling fancy, I'll probably chain cancel away from focus into night. Even though I don't have to do it because... I don't need it. And then I'm going to do a normal attack, make sure the normal attack hits the enemy, and then I'm going to press um, my job action button. For me, it's triangle, and it, and it has been for the last 3,000 hours. So um, that is the button I press, and I'm going to spin until they die. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I'm on the wrong. I meant to use Lightbringer. Ah, this camera. Okay. Let's switch to Lightbringer. <laughs> Shoot. <coughs> uh, switch over to Knight. Normal attack. Start spinning. Instinctively, I switch over to Monk to do the Soul Burst because... Um, other builds have a reason for that, but I don't actually have to do that on this build. Seal of blood for giggle. I did focus all the way up to four before the boss spawn. Uh, now we're just trying to survive Neon. Neon. The power of love. What? Ow. <laughs> you skipped a part of the song, Ben. I know. So let's do a seal of blood. Focus, chain cancel, normal attack, spin. That was so messy. Ah, crack. Chat that planet! Okay, and then we're going to do the Lightbringer because it was running low. We're going to use a few Lightbringers because thanks to Summoner... Who is this? No, 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 no. We will not be having any, like, uh, we just watched Jurassic Park, Terminator, and like the second Robocop movie, and guess what? We think this enemy would be so cool, and this was like back in the 80s that someone thought of this, and then like, this is what I've been thinking of this, all this time for like the last 30 years, and now it gets to be in Stranger of Paradise. It's the boss that makes like... Like, it makes someone that says, Hey, I've done every, like, 1.0 Final Fantasy XIV achievement, and I pride myself on doing everything legitimately. It makes that person turn on extra mode just to get the fight done and blame the game instead of themselves. That is how frustrating that boss is. Am I, like, outing someone? <clears throat> Anywho, let's punch ourselves.
Uh oh. Gah. You ever just have those mornings where you just want to stab someone that looks like you? Well, we just did. <coughs> You know, why is that beam not in here? Oh, enemies. Enemies. So we're going to defeat all enemies, just as a... How... Oh my gosh, my ears. It's a lot louder in my ears. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to start off with a Lightbringer, because we don't have any Dragon Trials. And then... Uh, we're going to do a Lunatic hit enemy and spin uh, let's do a sentinel let's get some focus oh my shoot let's do seal of blood and now we're gonna spin and this is why seal of blood is here so that all the spins and all the breaks Uh, when they decide to show up. Hello. I'm going to have to stop spinning. They're not coming out fast enough. Is there an enemy I just can't see? That is not what I meant to do. I did not mean to do a charge attack. Whoops. <laughs> and now I didn't do a seal of blood. Take that, Alpha Wolf. Trying is hard. Make winning easy. Okay. Uh, actually, I am going to just keep pushing through to finish the floor. So, congrats. This is now a Let's Play. As long as I don't crash. If I crash, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cry in the corner. <clears throat> also, I have so much loot to sort through after this that I might not be making a build video unless I split the save, make a copy, mass purge, and then just don't climb the floors on that save. Oh, great. Ah, I should have focused first. <coughs> it's not too late, Ben. Eat my shorts. Take this item and look at this unethic finisher where you just like, I'm gonna like squat and push this in a way that I don't have enough force to shatter the beast that traveled through dimensions in time to murder chaos. Chaos. Stop it. Return to the Hall of the Dark Crystal. You mean with uh, the, the David Bowie guy? Bowie? You mean Bowie? Bowie? What's his name anyway? Maybe it's Bowie. Nah, we just call him Mattias, dude. Dude? Why you call me dude? Shut up, Ben. You're almost done with the video. Anywho, that is... Oh, my shoot. What a painful rift. This would be a good test to, like, demonstrate the power of this build. Um, we have enough loot. So, before you go into a blue rift after floor 200, uh, just uh, consider doing Mega Ether. Talk to your 
Astos. Consider talking to your monsters. Feeding Bomb Skeleton, Malboro, and the... What was the last one? Oh, the Flan. With a Summon Stone. Because that gives you stamina. And uh, some HP is nice. Whoops. And then, if you really want the spirit... I already forgot who I was talking about. Was it Malboro? Um, that your your magic monsters, like Curl and, uh, like, Dawn... Uh, I'm sorry, the Pisco Demon, the Mind Flayer, the Ariman, and the, uh... What was the last one? The Horse. The butt phallus, or the buki phallus, uh, the buki phallus, whatever the heck that's called. Bu 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 uh, uh, gosh. Anywho, you can feed all of them, and then if you really want to go for it, you feed all the other creatures hard nuts, because that gives you more stamina. So everyone gets a hard nut. You get a hard nut. You get a hard nut. Everyone, even Miss Prickles, gets a hard nut. Tonberry, you get a hard nut, and the Iron Giant gets a hard nut. Because all that extra stick... There's no Iron Giant here. Why did I go here? Okay, anywho. We're going to end this video, do or die, on this rift. This is going to be painful because there's enemy attacks deplete buffs. And we're going to, again, do or die. If things are going really bad, I'm going to switch over to Dimension Bringer. Just to lock the enemy down and get a little bit more time to uh, think about my regrets. And then think about how I want to edit this video and cut it down by five minutes. <clears throat> so if we see a blue rift, we're going to just like instantly freak that out. Oh, thank goodness it's her. Ah, shoot. Let's get that sentinel going. So even though we are a little bit uh, reckless, because we're going to just try to end her as quickly as we can. that did she actually get it she got a dispel oh wait no she hit me i thought she dispelled me maybe she did darkness manifest so not like super like breaker swordsman crazy um, or even Cyclic Warrior or Berserker. And sometimes if you ever feel like target locking is getting you in trouble, you can disengage and just try to like spin to safety. Um, Warrior of Light. Soloing, darkness manifest. But you're not the real chaos. Where are your bat wings? I don't like the way you look. Stop it and go away. Lunatic. Where's Sentinel? It's still good. Dragon Zombie. Oh no, deadly stomp. It's okay. Oh, I'm just gonna look away like, yeah, I did a good job. Oh, oh, what? oh shoot, oh, dragon time. Oh shoot. Did just uh, swing over the, oh shoot, go just clip all those wings. All right, you didn't need those wings anyway. I don't even know what I just grabbed. Bone clubs. 
No, but seriously? What what the I mean, am I supposed to be never mind. Keep your thoughts to yourself, Ben. Like you have this whole video. Mm -hmm, you're doing a good job. Doing a good job. Oh. Hey, it's David Boo uh Ow. Oh crap. <laughs> that was dangerous. Oh. Our goal is to punch the heck out of him. Not once, but twice. Ouch! And now you've punched away all of his MP. And he gets to star in a sequel that will never get made. That is... That is punishment. Hey, it's regular TMR. So, we're doing okay, okay? Sentinel's holding up. We spin. Lost the buff there. And now we have so much loot that we probably just can't sort through all of it. And we get to listen to these chimes as they rip through our headset, our ears. Oh my goodness. Ben, turn it off. Maybe one of those is my damage dealt greatsword combo ability. I don't think it is. Anywho. 90 minute build video. My gosh. Uh, I'm going to post this. And then I'm going to maybe post a shorter version that doesn't have the same explanations. And uh, this this is the... This is the... I'm going to use the restroom or I'm on a long commute and I need something to listen to while I pass the time um, version of, of, of this. My gosh. My gosh. Ben, you are too verbose. You are a verbi. Anywho, thanks for watching. I salute you, even if you're on mute and time's too speed or not even watching this. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you. And uh, until next time, uh, 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 I need to work on the uhs and ums. Okay.